Beautiful. It's great. Yeah. So, it's a beautiful yeah, building. Yeah. Everybody right, shaking their head. Okay. okay, I think we're going to go back to announcements. Yes. <clears throat> so we um, have our legislative delegation here, Senator Sear and Representative Fernandes. And first off, I think that we have a special citation that they are going to present to an individual. And I think what we would like to do is our usual um, way of the board members and myself come up front. And if you two and the individual perhaps um, could come down on maybe this side, you could present over here. And then we're a, something of a receiving line. Okay. And you're going to give the bio on the individual? Yes. It's very simple. And I would say try to speak into the mic. Sure. Well, uh, sorry we're a little late. We got caught up at a, a chamber meeting. Uh, great to be back on island. Thank you guys for having us. And look forward to chatting uh, about any issues. Oh, there's the agenda right there. Have, looking forward to chatting about those issues. Uh, but before we do that, we really want to uh, take this time uh, to recognize uh, the captain with us this evening. We served Nantucket for uh, 32 years, or served on the steamship for over 32 years, um, making the trek back and forth. Uh, we're, all Islanders are incredibly reliant on that service. Uh, you really supply the lifeline for Nantucketers, um, and, and, <laughs> and it really helps us That's out awesome. too. <laughs> it, makes, it makes it a lot easier. So thank you so much for your uh, dedicated service to the island community. And we both have state house citations here uh, for your leadership uh, on the steamship. And this one's from the House of Representatives in recognition of your dedicated service as captain for the Steamship Authority and tireless efforts in guiding Nantucketers home uh, for the past 32 years. And I think it's, it's worth uh, noting this is from the Massachusetts legislature. It's signed for, by the Speaker of the House and, and myself, and Julian has one from the Senate as well. Um, and we, it, I think it's, it's worth recognizing that uh, in Massachusetts, uh, we have the longest serving uh, legislature, the longest serving democracy uh, in world history. So um, this will you know, forever be enshrined uh, in the State House. And it's just an honor to be here today uh, to present it to you and thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you. It's just great to, to be able to recognize um, people who, who, you know, the unsung people uh, who make a real difference in, in this community. Uh, and um, Dylan stole my usual line about uh, the Massachusetts legislature being the, the oldest continually uh, serving legislative body in the world. Um, but these citations actually go into that record. So um, you, well, you've already, you were already part of history, but now you're enshrined in history on Beacon Hill for, for as long as we have a Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So, Captain, just congratulations and thank you and, and wishing you um, an exciting and restful uh, retirement. Well, yeah. thank you so much. It's quite an honor. Of course. No, we'll, yeah, we'll, 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 we're on a road show today, so we can, we can go every, you know, we can go every other. Um, do you want to start? Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Well, thank you. Thank you for being here. It's, thank uh, you. Something I, we've been talking about for a while to get you guys to come every, every twice a year, every quarter, just to kind of give us an update of everything uh -huh. you're doing yeah. in, in the state. Um, well, thank you. I think Dylan and I, will, as, as we do, uh, in, in all of our work, um, we'll really, we'll really tag team this. 
Uh, we were actually just over at a, a, a Nantucket Chamber event, and earlier today we're participating in a behavioral task force meeting. Um, you know, now that at, we're at the end of the legislative session, uh, we've also been wanting to take stock of uh, what we've been able to deliver for the island, uh, and, and, and we feel that that's been significant. Um, so uh, we've been able to provide over $1.8 million in local funding priorities uh, for the island of Nantucket, uh, including $200,000 uh, to the town for coastal resiliency planning uh, in a changing, you know, in changing environment. Uh, that, that is critical. Um, we've both continued to secure ongoing funding for off-island medical transportation, which really is a, a significant challenge uh, for islanders receiving medical care, over $150,000 for that. Uh, shellfish propagation, which Dylan's led in the house. Um, how much is coming? Uh, so it's a uh, total of uh, uh, 350 for Barnstable Dukes and Nantucket counties, but they don't split that up by population size, they split that up by counties. So you guys get a third of that. Uh, I think that's one. 116 ish, if I'm math right now, is yep. correct? So around there. Yep. Uh, so over 100 grand on shellfish propagation. In an economic development bond bill that was passed in the legislature, uh, $1.2 million is, is, appropriate, is uh, authorized for Nantucket uh, for repairs to the pier, uh, an additional $300,000 to the Dreamland Foundation uh, for ongoing design and expansion there. Um, another issue we've heard extensively from constituents concerning. Uh, the squid fishery south of the island and the small the use of small mesh nets uh, which have been pretty problematic uh, we filed legislation on that we're not able to get much traction uh, but I actually filed an, an, an earmark in the budget for twenty thousand dollars mandating uh, that the division of marine fisheries study that fishery uh, and particularly the bycatch so we're hoping that this is going to give us some good data uh, to address that um, more broadly uh, related to island specific issues that have been of real importance. Uh, worked very closely with the Nantucket Chamber and their executive director, David Martin, uh, on changing how the state allocates tourism funding. Um, sort of regret, we got a $41 billion state budget. Um, only 10 million of that is for tourism promotion, which is a pretty paltry sum given how critical tourism is to this island, to, the, to all the communities we represent. Um, but we changed the funding formula to make sure that they get those dollars up front so they can actually do some real planning around tourism promotion. Uh, we'll continue to work on that. Uh, in um, the budget that came out, there's a, a sheriff's funding commission. Uh, we made sure that uh, there's a carve out and that uh, the needs of the sheriff here on island and also on Martha's Vineyard are looked at distinctly uh, for geographic isolation. Um, for bit I just said, well, while well, he's on sheriffs, yes. we over, the governor cut uh, Nantucket sheriff's budget by $100,000, and then we, in the legislature, overrode him uh, on that piece and restored the $100,000 for, uh, for Jim. Yeah, we, we always like to make sure we're looking out for Jim. Um, actually, in, in the FY19 budget, there's some really significant investments in education, uh, over $4.9 billion. It's the highest level of funding we've ever had. Uh, highest level, we're at 75% reimbursement for special ed costs. Uh, there's also uh, a new rural aid school formula that was led by Adam Hines and the, my colleague from the Berkshires and, and the Berkshire delegation in the House. Uh, but that Dylan and I supported, that's going to mean more money for Nantucket schools as well. Um, and then uh, there's a significant investment in uh, regional transit authorities, which will benefit, um, you know, uh, the island here, uh, an unprecedented level of, of substance misuse and prevention work. Uh, and then we were also able to secure um, uh, municipal, if you talk to your police chief and police chiefs across the Commonwealth, the real priority for uh, police chiefs have been trying to find a, a stable revenue stream for municipal police training. Uh, I led the effort in the House, uh, Dylan teamed up with it, in, or I led on the Senate, uh, <laughs> he's in the House. Uh, we were able to get this passed, it's gonna mean over $10 million uh, in municipal police training every year. So when your police department has new recruits, uh, that training will now be paid for by the state. So it's really a savings um, there. Uh, what did I leave out as far as state accomplishments? Uh, well, there's, uh, I mean, that you, you went through a lot of them. And I just wanna echo uh, on the police training piece, um, you know, this is something that's been a priority for the police chiefs for you know going on like two decades now, and Julian uh, uh, led the charge in the Senate. Was the first to get it passed. 
Um, and then the house really followed on his leadership. So it's just amazing work. Um, there was uh, $50,000 for uh, mental health and substance misuse on the island. I think a portion of that's already been released. Um, uh, and that's split over two um, fiscal years. And so we re-upped it this year uh, again. And that's, you know, to support a lot of the efforts here. We came earlier from a behavioral uh, task force meeting. So kind of engaging um, uh, the public health and mental health agencies on uh, the mental health issues here in particular. Um, issues of suicide on island is something that uh, uh, we worked on as well. Um, there's a couple other island specific pieces. One I see, you know, it's mentioned up there, marijuana law changes. Uh, we got an amendment into the marijuana bill for uh, Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket. You know, it's really rare to have any sort of kind of town carve out in a statewide piece of legislation, but we got a piece uh, particular for Nantucket that the Cannabis Control Commission has to issue special regulations toward, for Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard uh, because of the unique geography of the islands and the kind of implications around transporting a product that's still illegal on the federal levels through federal uh, air, well, well, federal air and water that is partially regulated by um, the federal government as well. So uh, that's another piece. Um, and maybe we can remember some other stuff as we're well, going home on. rules. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> well, I get the home rules now. Well, no, yeah. So <laughs> how much time do you have? Um, so we, I represent nine uh, communities, um, and uh, we find, and, and in those nine communities, four, we have I think fourteen, maybe thirteen home rules. And nine of them are from Nantucket, so um, hey, you it's, know it's different here. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, I mean, it's special. it is so special. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, I'm I will say, I will say, Cuddy Hunk hasn't filed a home rule. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, and uh, no, we're just joking. Uh, so a, a quick update on that: uh, of the nine, five have already passed uh, the House. Four have already been signed into law. Um, so you have the four uh, kind of land transfer pieces. Those were signed into law. One we actually changed. So on the last night of, of the legislative session, uh, we got a call. We had already passed one of them through the House. We got a call. I got a call from the governor's office saying they needed to change it. And even though we already passed it through the House, then we had to file it again and get it passed within you know the last 30 minutes remaining for the end of the session so that was that was fun um and so uh those four pieces are all uh through and signed into law um we have the piece on uh, the mosquito um, regulation change that already passed the house julian's going to get it passed through the senate uh shouldn't be an issue um ticking through the other ones there's the uh water merger piece um, that has been sitting in third reading for a very long time now um, and uh, we just got we we haven't moved on it because we got word from folks on island that they don't want to move on it so we've just held it uh, in third reading and we still haven't gotten further guidance on whether they want to move it or not so we're just you know we're just holding it um, so that's not going anywhere because you guys don't want it to go anywhere um, then there's uh, the, the housing uh, covenant piece. That is of the nine home rules that uh, we filed that you guys sent up. That's the only one that did not make it out of uh, committee. That got sent to a study order, um, es you know, essentially um, uh, killing it. Um, you know, and which uh, one was that? Just so so that, is the housing, that is the housing covenant one, the one for so being able to uh, uh, basically transfer to a family member, right? Um, so uh, that's something I met with the chairman of housing on that. We actually brought up Ann Kutzpa uh, to meet with the chairman of housing as well. You know, we're going to send a letter this week. It might have actually already gone out um, to the chairman to try and get it, get it released from the committee. Um, so it's not to say that it's totally uh, dead, but um, uh, generally when bills are sent to study, it's hard to get them released out. Um, the, the chairman, although when we met with them, was actually fairly supportive of it, um, they're a little nervous about it possibly being precedent setting. And so that I think is, is the reason why it's there. But we'll, we'll, 
we'll work in the next kind of month to get a real answer um, on, on why it's being held up and then we can work together um, either in the coming months or next session on it because I know it's, it's a priority. But you know, one, for, one out of nine is actually, is actually pretty good. So um, uh, to tick through the other ones, there's, so there's the, the transfer fee, right, for the housing bank. This is something that our office, our office has spent more time on this piece of legislation than any other piece of legislation that we filed, and there's around 20 pieces. Um, this piece is in uh, third reading at the moment. It's been in third reading for a while now, and just for, for folks, so it, we've got a, third reading is the last committee before it passes uh, the House, uh, so we got it through two other committees. Uh, really early on. It's sitting in the final committee for it passes. We've had a group of Nantucketers up to the State House to meet with the chairman of third reading, Ted Speliotis. He's actually said to us that he supports the legislation. Mm -hmm. um, and so then we had, but then he couldn't move it because he's getting direction um, from the speaker on this. And so then we had a, a, a group up um, to meet with a speaker um, of the House um, uh, Robert DeLeo on the measure, and that, that was a, a productive conversation about, uh, and both times, it was a great showing from Nantucket, about six members from the community, uh, both times came up and sat in a room and really were amazing advocates for the island and specifically this bill. Um, I've then had a follow-up meeting with the, the speaker on this. So it's the, so I, you know, we'll see what happens. I don't have a good answer on whether it's going to pass or not. But I will say that we have gone to bat on this thing. Uh, you know, we, we've gone to the mat and it's, it's, if it doesn't pass this year, I think we really need to revisit it because we've engaged every stakeholder that there is, you know, folks from, uh, uh, you know, prominent Islanders have weighed in. We've sent several letters from folks on Island. We've engaged the Island Real, uh, Realtors Association on this. Uh, you know, we've had several meetings with House leadership on this. Yeah, this is this is something we've really pushed on, um, and the reason that it hasn't gone anywhere is because with any kind of home rule petition, it, what holds them up generally is one, if they're setting a new precedent in the state, and this actually does do that. But two, um, what what's really holding it up, and the other thing that holds up um, uh, home rule petitions is if there is opposition, because usually it's just one town. Mm -hmm. A home rule petition is one town, right? And so usually it's non-controversial bills. This bill is uh, very much opposed by the Massachusetts Association of Realtors. It's even on their literature that they hand out. Their statewide literature has a little section of uh, uh, opposing this home rule on Nantucket on it. Um, and so that is the holdup. Um, my, you know, what I plan to. Uh, continue to push for it, and uh, we have a couple other pieces, uh, a couple other ways to advocate for this that we haven't exhausted yet that we're going to do in the next couple months. Um, and if this doesn't go through uh, this session, I plan on filing a statewide piece of legislation for a uh, very similar, actually, to your land bank transfer fee, but for a housing bank. Um, and I, I plan on filing a statewide local option and just I'm going to go to them and say, look, if you guys don't let Nantucket do this, I'm going to like engage all my colleagues on a statewide piece of legislation on this. And and, and, and hopefully, you know, um, and hopefully that that threat will. Dylan, what's uh, the uh, time the frame table? on the current bill? Like in two months, if nothing moves, then we move. So on. it's the session, right? So it's it's by January uh, 1st. Okay. Yep. So and so a lot of home rules, you know. Right now is when home rules pass because right now it you know it's the it's the one time of year where uh, all the kind of non contentious legisla legislation goes through because in informal session you only need one legislator to object and so they usually save a lot of the home rule petitions um, you know some pass during the year but a lot are saved towards the end uh, when you can kind of hammer hammer these out and you don't need a vote of the legislative body. You, you do need a two thirds for all of the transfer fees. You do need to ha uh, pass those um, in formal in a formal session um, uh, because that requires a two thirds vote uh, of the legislature. And those those have all passed. Is there anything that we could be doing better or differently from whether it's uh, elected officials, public yeah. community? Yeah. So I, on this on the transfer fee, no. 
I mean, we have, we've exact, Nantucket's been terrific. I mean, I really, uh, uh, and folks have uh, uh, dedicated days of their lives to advocating for this. Um, and so I, you know, w if we think of something, we'll absolutely okay. reach out and ask, but uh, you guys have been terrific and, and I'm, I'm hopeful. But on, on that point, um, in the next couple of months, we're going to be discussing um, articles to go in the annual town meeting. One is the the uh, adding uh, the adding back home rule petitions, and we may want if you're especially if you're thinking about another approach, or maybe we need to think about another approach. We should really have a conversation about whether we want to include that in this in the annual town meeting next year. Yeah. I, I would love to talk with you guys yeah. uh, pre yeah, yeah, yeah. the home rules um, uh, being proposed. I think that would yeah. be helpful. It's helpful for us. It's almost um, like what what could yeah. what could pass when we've been yeah. we've tried this for a few years. And yeah, yeah. And uh, so I think I think if it doesn't go this year, you know, you guys have been sending this mm -hmm. up for maybe a, a close to a decade, right? And um, or iterations of it for a very long time. And so um, this is this this year. Uh, and I know my predecessor, um, uh, Tim Madden, worked really hard on this piece. Um, and we, I think, really pushed for it this, this over the past two years. Uh, and if it doesn't make it through, I think we, we should kind of, we should at least convene and talk about yeah. it uh, and talk about what, what folks want to do. Um, and look, I'm happy to keep filing it as long as you guys keep electing me. But, um, but I think it's worth a conversation to... Uh, uh, to just chat about maybe revisiting some of some of uh, the language. The only other piece um, that I'll mention just to round out the home rule petitions is uh, the the membership change to the Nantucket Planning and Economic uh, Development Commission. That has already made it through uh, two committees as well, and uh, is sitting in third reading. Uh, so that's this is pretty non um, controversial. I don't really see a problem with it. Yeah. I think on the, the, the housing bank, and, and Dylan and his team have been uh, so dogged and yeah, persistent right. in this. This bill, you know, just from my perspective, has gone a heck of a lot further than I imagined it going. Um, and so Dylan really should be uh, uh, applauded to the, you know, the, the House is, I think, the barrier here. Um, or we have to get it out of the House before it to come to the Senate. Um, hence why Dylan's giving the, the update on the home rules. He, he has to do all the hard work first. Um, I, I do think, though, that... Uh, and how I've been talking about this on the Hill um, is, you know, the, the Nantucket Housing Land Bank bill, you know, this isn't the only strategy that the town is pursuing. Right. Um, and, and I think really making the argument that this is part of the solution. Uh, I think that uh, and this is a good, a good segue and transition actually into talking about uh, short-term rental uh, legislation. Some conversation in other towns I represent actually in my hometown of Truro uh, they're they're significantly talking about bringing um, something to their fall town meeting uh, about actually dedicating two percent of their local option um, that is likely to come with a with a home rule with, with this uh, I'm sorry with, with, that's going to come with uh, expansion of sh short term rentals um, and dedicating two percent of that to housing uh, you know so so I think that what what is most helpful in the argument we've been trying to make on the hill is like look this isn't you know, we need this transfer fee. We, we're going to need some sort of direct appropriations from the town. We're going to need, you know, other sort of pieces as well. Um, and, you know, because the, 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 the need is so significant. Um, so I think that's just something to, that I'm hearing and to keep in mind. Um, so related to uh, a long-term desire, and, and, and speaking of home rules, uh, you folks have passed uh, expansion of, of short-term rentals several times at town at town meetings, uh, so too have uh, several other communities that, that I represent across the Cape and Islands District. Um, and I think really thanks to that persistence, right? This is an issue that, you know, our colleague Sarah Peak, who's now in her, uh, going into her 11th term in the legislature, mm -hmm. or not 11th, 11th year or 12th year in the legislature, not 11th term, um, you know, she's been sort of working for over a decade there. Uh, because of the persistence of towns like Nantucket and the Cape and Islands delegation, and also because um, of how Airbnb and other platforms have now been in interacting with the real estate market in Boston. Um, you know, you had the Boston delegation as well concerned about this. So uh, both, in the both the House and the Senate passed uh, bills this last session. Um, usually the Senate is sort of more granular and, and, and regulatory. Uh, it was the House actually this time that was uh, 
uh, kind of had, had more more requirements. Uh, the Senate was a little uh, less full of, of, of regulatory requirements. Uh, there was a conference committee. Uh, a conference report came out uh, at the end of the session, and both chambers passed and uh, voted on and passed the conference report of a final bill and sent it to the governor's desk. Uh, that includes a 5% state uh, across the board occupancy. So whether you're a hotel, a motel, Airbnb, or a short-term rental, uh, any rental of, of, of 30 days uh, or less uh, is taxed. Uh, they also add, uh, included in that is a local option, uh, just like we have under the existing motel and hotel occupancy. Towns can opt to have 2%, 4%, or up to 6%. That's there as well. Um, also included in this is a, a registry where um, publicly accessible information is uh, on online and, and, and information that consumers can look up as it relates to where these rentals are. Uh, there, there are some criteria for inspections and town-related action. Uh, and there's also a requirement for um, a certain level of, of, of uh, homeowner's insurance and a certain level of liability insurance, um, which, which I think could impact some, some renters. Uh, the other piece in this and, and, and where uh, my office and I have focused on extensively is um, using this bill as a vehicle to meaningfully address the wastewater challenges that we face. Uh, yes, here on Nantucket, on Martha's Vineyard, uh, and particularly on Cape Cod. Uh, the 15 Cape Cod towns are under court-ordered action and a court-sanctioned uh, agreement, uh, which is called the, uh, the 208 plan, uh, which is a $4 billion plan to clean up estuaries and embayments across the 15 towns on Cape Cod, uh, approved by US EPA, approved uh, by Governor Baker and, and MassDEP, uh, and, and, and also a party to this is the Conservation Law Foundation that brought the suit. Um, so with this $4 billion problem we have on Cape Cod, the state had committed a billion dollars for, uh, that they were going to put a billion towards this $4 billion problem. You know, and our job as legislators, which a big chunk of that is as, as appropriators, you know, you think, where, where the heck am I going to get a billion dollars, right? This isn't an earmark you can insert into a, a budget. Um, you know, a billion dollars is about the size of the bond authorizations we do for various, uh, for, for on, on various areas. Uh, so we led a process uh, with the entire Cape Alliance delegation, uh, including local chambers, uh, environmental groups, and municipal leaders, uh, and, and a whole iterative process to come up with uh, what is now a Cape and Islands Water Protection Fund. Uh, the goal of the fund was to create um, a repository where we could generate monies uh, through room occupancy uh, and potentially other future federal sources uh, that um, the state uh, couldn't and the legislature couldn't sort of stick our sticky fingers into and, and, and redirect that money at a later date, uh, not wanting to create a new bureaucracy, not wanting to create an MWA for Cape Cod and the islands. Um, and so we came up on this fund, which is a subset of the existing state revolving loan fund program administered by the treasurer's office uh, and in consultation with DEP that I think you folks are probably well familiar with. Um, and that you've worked with all the time. So this is a subset fund. It's funded by a 2.75% additional fee surcharge on all occupancy on Nantucket, uh, Martha's Vineyard, and Cape Cod. Uh, and so that goes into a set-aside fund. Uh, the fund is additive for existing SRF resources, so they, they can't take away the existing resources that we get. Um, it's, it uses the same criteria as SRF, right? So we're using a very numbers-based sort of non, as a, a depoliticized, you know, decision making around projects. Um, yes, it funds traditional pipes and pumps, but it also funds alternative methods. Uh, it also provides resources and it could fund Title V upgrades. Uh, if it were basically, if it relates to cleaning up estuaries and embayments, uh, you can receive funding for it. Uh, also, it enables that you can use the resources to pay down existing debt. So Nantucket, mm. as well as mm. Provincetown, Chatham, Falmouth, and Barnstable, Oak Bluffs, Edgar Town, and Tisbury uh, have already put existing resources into some sort of sewering. Uh, they can refinance the debt through this. Um, both Dylan and I fought very hard to make sure that Nantucket and also the six island towns in Martha's Vineyard had a chance to come in uh, to uh, the fund. Uh, one being that you know you folks face very similar challenges uh, as the Cape does. You're, you're not under court action. 
Uh, and I think we both really worried that we'd get a fix for Cape Cod and then you know, a few years down the road at a, a, a subsequent select board meeting, whether we were in these positions or, or, or whoever succeeds us, you know, you'd be asking, hey, can we get into this? Um, so wanting to make sure that Nantucket uh, has a real, uh, an option to come in. Uh, also, the more uh, money you put into the fund, the bigger the pot, the more you can finance, uh, and it benefits everyone. Um, and so this has been you know, supported and passed in both chambers. It has the support of um, the Baker Polito administration as well. Uh, so currently, the, so the bill, as I said, the, so this is part of the broader Airbnb bill. This was a subset of it. Um, sent to the governor's desk. The governor sent back several, uh, what I would consider relatively friendly amendments uh, to the bill. One provides an exemption for 14 days. If you rent 14 days or less, you're not subject to the tax. An another tweaks and changes how the registry works. Um, you know, there's, there's some concerns with it, but broadly, uh, you know, broadly keeps the spirit of the bill. Um, personally, I don't have a problem with these amendments. I actually supported some of these amendments when we were voting, when we were actually debating the bill. Uh, but the House lead, uh, Aaron Michaelowitz, who represents the North End, um, uh, does have some, 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 some challenges and problems with it. Uh, so unclear what's going to happen. Um, we can... We could, um, if we accept the governor's amendments, uh, then we'd send the bill back to his desk and he would sign it into law. If we would reject them, the, the, the bill essentially dies. Uh, there was an editorial last week in the Boston Globe really saying, pass, you know, pass this Airbnb bill. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm sort of uncertain of where, from a Senate perspective, we don't have a problem with these amendments. Mm -hmm. uh, sort of uncertain what's going to happen, uh, specifically with you know, but whether or not this passes this session or is something that uh, when we come back and reconvene in January, uh, you know, and is passed either through, likely probably as, as part of the FY20 budget, um, you know, this is something that, that's going to happen. Uh, we already have a framework for what, uh, what the agreement is. And the really good news on that Cape Island's Water Protection Fund is everyone thinks that's a really good idea. There's a lot of broad support. Um, you know, thank you to, to, to members of the board and, and, and to Libby and the town staff who really provided some very helpful feedback uh, on that. Um, so this is going to happen, I think, more likely than not, because we're getting into, uh, you know, this, had the bill been signed into law immediately, it would have gone into effect in January 2019. Um, I think increasingly, as we get closer to that date, it's, it's uh, you know, there's some questions around, you know, w w when that's phased in. Um, but I think broadly, this is something that's going to come and going to happen. So whether it's in starting in 2019 or then in 2020, um, we will have this. Uh, for Nantucket, that means just on the home rule alone, just rather on the um, local option alone, at six, and I believe you're at 6% now, um, I would hazard a guess that you're going to see a doubling of, of that resources even more. I mean, you have significant, you know, Every home that's rented for five, ten, whatever thousand dollars a week in the summer is going to be subject to that local option, and so I think you know would encourage you folks to think about you know what wh where those resources will, will be applied to. Um, Don, did you have a question? We, yeah, we've already talked about trying to slate that money specifically towards housing and um, and infrastructure that's necessary to provide the services for the vacationing population. Yeah, it's, it's um, yeah. And I was just going to say that I really thought that the governor's changes were appropriate, and I hope yeah. that it will get passed if that helps at all. <laughs> um, and. Um, there have been a lot of questions about the implementation, though. Um, but so January would it be? It would be leases written after January first, nineteen, or potentially. So currently, as the bill's written, um, leases that are signed and executed before November first, twenty eighteen, are not subject to the tax. Um, we're getting pretty close to that date. Yeah. Uh, so I, I I I I don't exactly know. I. I think now, I think it's less likely than more likely that the House accepts this. Um, what I just sort of don't get is I'm like, accept the amendment, and if you want to come back and change it, you know, we come in in, in January and we have two thirds majorities. I mean, we can we can essentially dictate what we want. Um, you know, not not sure if that's going to happen. I think from a town from the town planning perspective, you know, un, uncertain when when those dollars are going to start flowing. But I think it is really prudent to really think about 
know, this is going to be significant, significant dollars mm -hmm. for Nantucket. And actually for all the communities, the nine communities don't represent the 20 I do, it's probably going to be the most substantial form of, of state aid in, in an effect that's going to come you know, dollars that are raised in your community come right back to your community with no strings attached. Uh, that is very, very significant. It's probably going to be the largest sum we'll see of that um, for quite some time. So that, so, that is the 6%, the right, the local option? That's the 6% local option. The 2.75, that's going into the bigger fund. How does that get allocated? So that's allocated through the exist, first and foremost, the existing SRF criteria that exists. So, so projects are scored just like they're scored now. And then there's a management board that every single town has a seat on uh, that is tasked with equitable distribution of the funds. In a prior iteration of the bill, uh, we actually said, you know, every town, you know, a dollar in, you know, Nantucket at least has to get back the money that's raised on Nantucket for the project. That doesn't, as um, legal counsel may know, uh, that doesn't work uh, legally. Uh, that's kind of considered a Ponzi scheme. Um, so, so we structured this management board uh, whose you know, primary responsibility is to ensure equitable distribution. Given that all the towns are going to have an interest in this, we're hopeful that um, that won't be too much of an issue. Uh, every town has an equal vote on the board. And so if you just politically, if you add up, if, if the six Martha's Vineyard towns come in, Nantucket, and then I would argue, you know, the outer, the four or five outer Cape towns, um, which really have much more of an interest and in, in align with the challenges that you folks have, than on the mid Cape, you would actually have a majority of the board. Um, so we should start making friends. Yeah, <laughs> or they should start making friends with you, because uh, I think Nantucket, um, Nantucket will certainly be up there along with probably Chatham, Provincetown, and Barnstable for the for the largest generator of those resources. Okay. So that's that. We talked about the housing bank. Um, Marijuana. Were there anything? Was there anything specific about marijuana law ch changes? Julie, yep. Yeah, sorry, Great. just skip back for one second. Um, you mentioned something about with the um, one of the amendments being bumping the occupancy time back up to ninety days. That there would be some sort of wording protecting seasonal workers. So, so that's a concern that that um, one of the small concerns we do have with uh, the governor's amendment. I mean, my mm -hmm. preference would be to to accept it and then go back and fix. Okay. Uh, because there, there is a concern with seasonal workers and, 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 nine, and not wanting to, um, you know, not, not wanting to adversely impact right. them. Yeah. You know, we see a lot of that. You know. Do you have wording in mind or once, if it did come back as a future possible amendment? I think we would make sure to, to, to clearly exempt uh, any, any housing related to seasonal employment okay. activities. Yeah. Uh, I believe, and I... I believe the language is written refers to um, housing provided by employers for seasonal workforce. Mm -hmm. Not all seasonal workers are housed in housing that's provided yeah. by their employers. So yeah. I think we need something a little more flexible and expansive. Yeah. Uh, but Sarah Peak has been, who actually was on the conference committee, mm -hmm. uh, Sarah Peak's the mm -hmm. state representative from uh, the Outer Cape, uh, and and is, is in leadership actually in the House. Uh, she's looking very closely at that to make sure we don't we don't see an adverse. Okay impact there and, and often with these larger bills we often have to go back and make mm -hmm. smaller technical fixes and this is what would be considered a small technical fix. I mean, not small but I don't, I don't mean insignificant but uh, uh, something we can fix in a technical yeah. manner I wouldn't be that worried about the 90 day mm -hmm. period because uh, most people require if you're renting yeah. to, to summer you know summer employment it's a hundred 120 day yeah, season the seasons alike. yeah they, they want four or five months you know, or you know, ninety days. I think most of them are well over ninety. If you're running a house, they're not going to rent it yeah. to you just for a short period. You know, and the other thing is the fourteen days uh, that mimics the you know, I don't know if people know that federal middle exemption. the federal exemption, which you know some people take very uh, oh, take advantage of it. Let's <laughs> shall we say they rent their houses for fourteen days for a ton of money to various companies that their friends own and et cetera, et cetera. It's a way to bring money, you know, it's a way to bring tax-free money in, which is pretty interesting. Yeah. But, so that's why that's probably not going very far. <laughs> yeah. Question. So then on, well, I just yeah. Add, yeah. And Julian no, China, worked sorry. really hard on this and is, uh, uh, was amazing in getting it through uh, the Senate really early on. Um, but the only other piece, and it was mentioned about the allocation of the 6%, um, Donnie talked about housing. And that I think, if if this transfer fee does not go through, that I think we can revisit about 
um, you know, creating a pot mm-hmm. for that through um, through this if and if and when, and, and it will go through eventually. Um, we just don't know the timing on that, and so we'll just keep an eye on it and stay. In, it'd be great to stay in touch in a pre-town meeting and, and your guys' schedule for home rules. And you said we could propose two, four, or six yep. as a local, because so there already, are some concerns with the tax have, getting too large. You already have six percent, mm-hmm. and um, the law is written in a way that the existing local option you have just extends to short-term rentals. So okay. there's no vote that you don't have, there's no vote at town meeting. Um, I actually don't think the law will allow you to have a bifurcated rate. Um, so it, there, okay. there's, it's an equitable rate. Okay. Um, so if you wanted to lower that rate, you know, some towns may consider, you know, they're at 6% now, you know, they're, they're gonna lower it to, to 4% because they're gonna get so much more money. Across um, the board. You know, I think given the, given the need that you folks have to create multiple streams for housing, um, you know, I, I think I think the the fact that the board is considering allocating some of this new money that comes in, or a certain percentage of that, is really prudent. And, and I would argue too that, you know, that you folks need that in addition to this transfer fee, mm-hmm. in addition to maybe some some direct appropriations uh, akin to how Provincetown is funded their 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 housing bank. Right, that the need is so significant. You know, you need kind of mul- you likely need multiple streams to really prop up. Uh, something as big and significant as I think you're hoping to do. So when this passes, it will it be an automatic automatic thirteen point seven five. Yep. Okay. I just wanted to. I, I don't think no. people so, are necessarily no. clear sorry, on that. Sorry. So they, they wouldn't including they wouldn't, the two point seven five. Wouldn't automatically be sorry. It'd be an automatic eleven, and then you would opt in on the two point seven five. The okay. islands. So the islands, yeah. uh, Nantucket, uh, and the seven towns uh, in Dukes County opt into the 2.75 for Barnstable County and the 15 or so towns there they don't opt in they actually have to opt out okay yeah. but how and it's, by town meeting vote we no, opt in no, or by, we we decide by by your legislative like you, you by the select board can okay. opt in um, and it's actually just the opt-in criteria is to uh working with dep to establish what's called a suitable equivalent plan to a 208 plan uh essentially the existing um, clean water plan that you're working on with DP mm-hmm. is going to qualify for that. Um, I think if there's a so 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 we actually were planning to actually bring DP to the island to begin working on this right away because we don't have a bill. There's you know they're sort of in waiting. Um, it's designed that 208 criteria is frankly designed to make the the fund protective from um, sort of off Cape Cod and island interests wanting to get in. Uh, but the barrier for you folks to enter should be very low. If you don't want to be in it, then you just don't work with DEP. Um, but that's something that's handled at the town level, does not need to go before town meeting. Okay. So I think, did, we, did you folks have other questions on marijuana? Because we did housing bank, we did... Plastic bags. Plastic bags, the Senate passed no, a ban. Plastic bans. Plastic bans. The Senate passed a plastic bag ban. The House wouldn't accept it. Uh, <laughs> and you guys can uh, pass all the local home rules you want on that um, so, through oh, local health authority. Yeah, please do. Please so, do. So uh, uh, it, I'm very supportive of plastic bag bans, co-sponsor of the bill. And I, I just think it's uh, really unfortunate the House uh, didn't allow uh, that to go through. But um, un- not plastic bags. Uh, in, in the United States, uh, there are four towns uh, that have banned uh, single-use plastic water bottles, mm-hmm. and all four of them are in Massachusetts, and you don't need to go through the legislature to do that. Mm-hmm. So just plastic, I didn't say ba- bag, yeah, but yeah. just plastic bans in general. Um, uh, the town, we're actually working with the town of Chilmark uh, right now. They're interested in banning single-use plastic water bottles and uh and also single-use plastic um uh sodas because you know if you just bland water then will people drink soda you know you don't want to really encourage that so um so that's something they're actually looking into uh and, and that's something that you guys can do on your own if you want to has been banned single-use plastic uh, uh water bottles and if you're interested in that you know i'm happy to Asked some folks from Concord was the first town to do it in America. I think um, it would be good. If yeah. they're interested in coming over, you know, it, it's 
uh, it, it can be a challenge in some areas, um, uh, banding single use plastic water bottles. There's some towns on the Cape that you can't actually uh, drink the tap water or you have to get it, you have to get it filtered. Uh, Nantucket, you guys can just drink your own tap water. Um, and look, you know, we're, we're an island community, uh, we're, we're an ocean community, and um, we've seen how single use plastics have uh, really destroyed our oceans and, and the kind of microplastics that are now in all the seafood that we eat and the like. And uh, you guys understand sustainability better than almost any other community uh, in this commonwealth. So I, I think it's something uh, worth looking into. Question, does that mean the Stop and Shop and Cumberland Farms can't sell them as well? Yes. Because we've been advised that we couldn't do that previously. Can do that. Okay. You can ban, sing so a municip any municipality can ban uh, single-use plastic the selling uh, of it. bottles, right. period. Um, and uh, what? So Concord, so if you go to Concord, they have uh, the like the cartons of the kind of milk carton water mm. bottles. Um, and do you realize those are really bad unless you have a way a facility that breaks yeah. them into three different pieces? Yeah, and sure. And, and, the, and the inside they're, they're actually worse than actually the others. Plastic. So, I understand. But look, that. you know, that's and you get, you know, you could probably ban that, too, if you want it. You would have to. That, that's sort of. That's, but Matt, to that point, too, we don't have either of those facilities. Right. So and that's my point. So it's, it's sort yeah. of greenwashing because I bought those. I bought a whole pallet thinking yeah. I was doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. And then when I actually looked into it, I realized mm -hmm. it was actually worse than the water bottles because the water bottles could be, right. uh, could yeah. be. So, so one of the things Concord, so so it, and those are actually rare to find in Concord, but one of the things Concord has done is like, and again, this is all on the local level. This isn't state level, but one of the things that, you know, you should, that if a town was going to do it, what they should pursue is not only the ban, but also a campaign around how mm -hmm. great uh, Nantucket water is right and so you could do like right. a branding Nantucket water campaign and get people mm -hmm. a campaign about having everyone carry their own uh, their own uh, portable water bottles and then in Concord you know all, every restaurant and every business allows people to come in and just use their tap water uh, to fill up so I think you'd want to couple that if you were to do it you'd want to couple that with a campaign like that but uh, again um, uh, you know something you guys have the power to do if you're mm -hmm. Interested in that. And then what I'm talking about. Um, this is uh, where in January last year, uh, at, at our request, the Department of Public Health came to the island uh, and met with islanders on, on, on a number of issues. Uh, the suicide contagion we have ongoing here, uh, off island medical transportation, which we made some progress on, uh, also looking at our island home. It was actually, the department actually suggested um, that they could provide uh, a letter with guidance to the town as far as what sort of options you may or may not have, um, particularly as it relates to renovating the existing facility and how that would interact with existing uh, DPH nursing, uh, skilled nursing facility regulations. Uh, so this was their suggestion. Um, we have sort of, we've been persistently pinging them on this. Uh, I have a, I probably have one of the best relationships with the Department of Public Health for any legislator, given that I, I used to work there, so I, uh, I, I, I know uh, quite, a, quite a bit about the agency. Um, and I've been, frankly, I'm frustrated that they haven't given us a response. Uh, my staff actually was just corresponding with uh, DPH the other day about this. Um, so I, I, I think given that this was their mm. suggestion, uh, given that this is uh, with the closing of the Taunton uh, Skilled Nursing Facility, um, which is owned by the town. This is going to be the last municipally owned nursing home uh, in the Commonwealth. Uh, really hope that DPH can give us some answers on this. Uh, skilled nursing beds as a whole, we actually have a skilled nursing facility that just announced that it's closing uh, in Brewster. Uh, so even on, mm -hmm. on mainland Cape Cod, uh, we continue to see a, a contraction of skilled nursing facilities. Uh, a lot of that relates to the relatively low reimbursement rate they receive uh, most of these facilities and most of these patients are funded through Mass Health, um, and there's about an $80 a day gap in what they get from the state and what their costs are. Um, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I'm sure. Yeah, it, ours, we have a little bigger gap than that. So. <laughs> you, you folks would probably love to <laughs> only have an $80 gap. Yeah. Um, so, so we're going to keep on this persistently uh, because I think that you know guidance from DPH I think would be helpful to the town, um, just in, in in looking at what what your options can be with the site. Do you, uh, do you have any? Have you speculated why it's taken over a year? Um, 
It hasn't taken over a year. There, but we've been, we've been, so, we've been, so asked, we, no, we've been asking for over a year. Oh, but so, so since, 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 since you, no, I know, I'm not, yeah. not saying you, but I mean, yeah. we've been asking for. Uh, so since I asked, uh, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. One might be uh, wanting to. One is just staff time that they're they're, okay. they're always. Sort of, okay. This is a billion dollar agency with ten units and a hundred programs, and they have a lot going on. Uh, I think too that they want to be really careful about absolutely you know right. what they, what they put know, in, right. yeah. in 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 writing and what's in precedent. Um, but they offered this, so and, and and I don't know if 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 they were a little too generous in offering it, mm. but they offered it, and so we'll, we'll make sure you get an answer on that. I mean, I'm, I, if I need to be, you know, if I need because to we had te- my recollection, we had a telephone conversation with mm. someone there, and they didn't want to put it into writing, so. Again, that was, and then and then us uh, politicians got involved, yeah. and they said they would. Um, but we'll, we'll, I, I think um, my goal is to make sure that you okay. folks get a response before the new year. Um, and 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 honestly, this I've been very dismayed and surprised that it's taken mm-hmm. so long because usually they're pretty responsive uh, to us. Uh, so I think did, did and did we cover the marijuana question you folks have? Did we get that? I don't know. I- I think so. I, I think we were so. just asking if there were any updates in the yeah. works that hadn't come out yet that you might know about. No, I mean we we haven't revisited uh, the law, and um, uh, the Cannabis Control Commission is, is still kind of issuing licenses. Uh, you know, they're behind. <laughs> they're not as behind as they were. I mean, well, they're a new agency, but it's it's certainly quicker than uh, what happened with medical, yeah. which we weren't around for. But you know, I think we can all agree it's a total was a total disaster. Um, so they're moving along. Um, they're they're moving more slowly than folks would like. We all thought that retail would open up uh, sometime this summer, um, but now it's it's looking like it's going to be um, here this fall. Um, you know, there's no real legislative update there. The law hasn't changed in the past uh, over a year now, and uh, it, it, I don't I don't anticipate any tweaks um, moving forward. There was there was um, there's been some complaints uh, uh, about the Cannabis Control Commission not cracking down on towns community agreements with um, dispensaries in their towns because some towns are really. Uh, <laughs> Uh, going kind of overboard and what they're asking from uh, these dispensaries in, certain, in terms of kind of financial support and the community agreements. Um, the Cannabis Control Co- Commission has said that they are, are not going to uh, kind of come in and, and, and oh, slap the wrist of towns. <laughs> so, uh, so you know, that's, that's kind of the latest yes, update more. there. Um, mm-hmm. but, not, but no changes. And, but if anything changes, um, you know, we'll, we'll let you know if any, if any pieces come up. I see so, there's a... Yeah. Uh, when you mentioned the transportation carve out, um, there's another aspect of it. The Board of Health here is really concerned about the, I don't know if it's an exemption, but the carve out that was given to facilities here for testing because because there's no local testing lab. Uh, yeah. they, they could, they'll be able to do their own and they're not testing for certain things that we think are important. So would this carve out or uh, allow the transportation of the product back to a testing lab? No, the, the carve out allowed them to test on island because that was that. Well, no, but the, but the they're they're not going to have the co- the level of a laboratory here that they're going to have in a central location right. because right. you can't. It's just there's not enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. So what the cannabis control commission did was, it's my understanding that they gave them. No, I understand. This carve out. Right. And you're saying. Can we're we not so, have the car. Found? No, I'm not <laughs> saying that. I'm, yeah. All I'm saying is that the, the inability to transport the product from here to a mainland mm-hmm. testing site um, doesn't allow the testing for a number of uh, elements and metals and certain that that we we have concerned about concerns about. And you mentioned that. I thought you mentioned you're thinking about, you know addressing the transportation because of the federal waters and air that right. might have a so so yeah no i i totally hear you and if there's something that you want to if you want us to engage the cannabis control Co- commission on asking them to you know send testers out here or something like that we're we're happy to work with okay, you on that okay. but but the carve out that you're talking about <laughs> I'm talking about a the, different car. Kind of, yeah. No, no. So yeah. they're allowed to do that. No, I know, I know because, that because because of the car, the transportation car right. route. 
right? And so um, that's because you just you you guys are not going to have the industry here to scale right. to support right. um, a testing facility. And so how do you have an industry here because you need the testing? Right. And so that that carve out is actually to allow for testing on island. Right. Um, but we you know we're happy to uh, you know. Uh, work with you guys to engage the CCC on uh, on kind of you know if we can advocate for for them to send over testers from off island here or, or something like that. I, you know, I frankly, I, you know, we're happy to reach out to them and ask about that if that's something you guys are interested in. So we have a board of health meeting tomorrow, so we'll I'll bring it up for discussion. Okay. I have one quick question on. I know the. Medical marijuana, I think licenses are being transferred, ownership and oversight from DPH yep. to the Cannabis C Control Commission. And are we sure that nothing is going to change from the CCC on medical marijuana? Or is it just a quick transfer in there? Gonna... My understanding is it's, it's been transferred. Okay. The, the staff have been transferred. The program's been transferred. And nothing, there's no changes coming no, from No, not, not sort of significantly. Um, you know, I mean, this is, this is creating a whole new regulated industry in the Commonwealth. Um, you know, I actually used to work, I worked briefly on, on, on the medical marijuana uh, piece when I was in public health. It's remarkably complicated, um, you know, and, and I think that uh, I've actually been really, you know, the Cannabis Control Commission, I think, has done a lot more than I even expected they could do in the really short time frame we gave them. Um, but I think as specific issues, uh, and also now you're at a point where if you do have, um, you know, facilities both on the medical side and on the recreational side, we need to have host agreements with the town. Um, if there's any technical assistance we can provide, uh, you know, the town, there's both a, a planning role there on the host agreement and also sort of the, the, the local health piece. You know, we're glad to assist and, and sort of route, route their attention um, to those issues as they come up. Um, they have been very attentive. I think they actually came here. I know they've been to Martha's Vineyard. Um, several of the commissioners, two of the commissioners actually were former colleagues of mine, one at DPH, one in the Senate. Um, so if there's anything sort of specific as hiccups come up, let us know. It, it's going to continue to be, a, um, you know, it, 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 it's quite an implementation. Um, I think what we've just, we, we both felt very strongly on it and worked very early to do, this was one of the first bills passed in the session in June 2017, um, was to make sure that the will of the voters on Nantucket and also on Martha's Vineyard, these are communities that voted in favor of recreational marijuana. I think, I think only Cambridge and then, you know, in my neck of the woods, Provincetown, uh, voted at higher percentages in favor of this, uh, so we're just trying to to make sure the will of the voters are um, are respected. Thanks. I think that uh, on the other piece, you know, I think we'll just add. I think both of us have heard significantly of concerns from constituents in, in recent months um, as it relates to ongoing 40B projects uh, on the island, um, and then specifically as it relates to the Surfside project, uh, because the project is sort of in route. Uh, you know that that's between between the town and, and between the developers. Um, you know, and, and and no sort of state action or legislation can impact that uh, because it is in 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 in, in process. Um, where we have been focused, and we've actually been focused on this before, um, before we heard concerns from, specifically on this pro project from from Islanders, uh, is really challenging the state uh, to look at how we're counting um, what's considered as capital A affordable housing on Nantucket, also on, on Vineyard Towns and on the Outer Cape. Um, the current uh, way the state uh, indexes affordable housing, the SHI index, uh, doesn't take into account, for instance, covenant housing, uh, doesn't take into account um, uh, other workforce-related housing that's been looked at. Um, we're working to ask the Department of, uh, of DHCD, the Department of Housing and Community Development, to do a study on this. Um, if, if, if if, if, if asking doesn't get us results, we'll work to, to file legislation to mandate it. Uh, but broadly, I think when you look at both capital A affordable housing and the broader need that you have here um, and getting and, and, and around the uh, index that the state provides and, and around that 10% uh, is certainly something that, that our office has actually been working on. Um, a housing production and zoning reform bill uh, was talked about quite a bit in the legislature, also by the governor. Uh, nothing materialized this session, but I expect that we will uh, take up a pretty, you know, whether it's a several smaller bills or a significant omnibus bill, both related to zoning reform and housing production. This is long overdue. Um, I think we're going to have an eye, and, and my office has already actually worked on a series of proposals 
um, as it relates to, to housing and zoning needs that we have in our more seasonal communities that really have this, you know, those of us that really struggle with this out of whack real estate market um, that doesn't meet the needs of, of, of um, working families, that doesn't meet the needs of older adults. Uh, and so we're looking at everything from, uh, you know, tiny homes that SHI index we looked at, uh, you know, any ideas and thoughts that you folks have, uh, please send it our way. This is the time of year um, when we are in informal session, when, when my staff has the time to, and Dylan's staff has the time to really sink our teeth into some policy solutions. Uh, but I really want to be prepared going in, and I think I intend in January when we reconvene uh, to file legislation or a suite of legislation addressing housing concerns and challenges and a whole host of, you know, everything from technical fixes to bigger, bigger pieces um, that relate to the needs that we have in our communities. If you look at the governor's housing choices bill, um, it left out most rural and smaller communities, uh, including Nantucket, including a number of other uh, communities on the Cape. Um, so so we're, we've been really focused on these issues and will continue to be. Uh, but I just wanted to raise that because I know that we, we've heard a lot. I'm sure you've heard a lot. Uh, and, and, and there's very legitimate concerns about um, the, the existing project. Uh, but, but that is... Um, that, that, that is uh, in, in process, um, and I know you folks are working on that. It, it would be really meaningful to us if we could get some kind of credit towards our shy numbers yeah. for anything that's affordable in perpetuity up to the 150, because we've made some significant progress in that area here. Um, also, exactly. yeah. for the workforce housing that we have initiated under our local zoning to be able to get credit for that faster, mm -hmm. um, because that's actually, that, that's really been a hindrance to us, mm -hmm. to not have credit for the 6FG project or for the Richmond project. Yeah. Would, it, would it be helpful, do you want us to ask to bring DHCD here to, to, to look at these issues, or, or do you think that they... Because I know the town has had communications with them for quite some time and before before our tenure. Um, what do you think the, the, if there's anything you think that would be effective in It's always good to bring people attention? here to see yeah. it. I think Crystal has been here. She has been. A fair amount. But I she, mean, at least, uh, at least once, maybe twice in the time I've been here. She's I know she's yeah. moved to mass housing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we could, we could engage We should ask Under Secretary Chan yeah. to come. Yeah. I've, yeah. Yeah, I've shared, and I've shared with, with both of you guys a similar idea. I think Nantucket, we've solved it. A lot of businesses have solved it. There's a lot more uh, town, you know, employee housing through businesses here than there is almost anywhere else. And yeah. I think even if we got credit like a quarter percent or half a percent toward, you know, toward the shy, I think it would be helpful for the island. And I think it would, wouldn't really set a precedent because there's not a lot of other places that have done it at the level we have. No. You know, I've, I've got a, a I've got a fifty, you know, fifty employees, forty five employees. I house thirty of them, and I wouldn't be in business without it. And and that's you know more the norm than not out here now. And so I just think that should be given some consideration. Absolutely. You know, people here are spending you know thousands and th hundreds of thousands of dollars to do the right thing. You know, so. And Nantucket's been a I mean, Nantucket is a model in the entire state when it comes to. Uh, uh, creative housing options and um, a lot of other communities uh, look to Nantucket what Nantucket's done and I have colleagues in the legislature that come up to me in session and ask me about certain Nantucket uh, initiatives and it's actually town uh, Somerville actually filed uh, the housing back legislation that you guys have been sending up uh, for years uh, because they've you know they've looked at a, a whole host of, of things that you guys have done here so I think uh, you know you all should be commended uh, for the work that you do here being a model uh, to the state and um, couldn't agree more on the shy list changes Noah fisheries hooey okay <laughs> cool. yeah well so uh, I see this note at the bottom um, uh, so just as a little background on this, NOAA uh, fishery is stationed in Woods Hole. Um, it's about 275 uh, employees there. It's one of the largest employers on the Cape and Islands. They're going through uh, this uh, business analysis about uh, moving facilities. They're, they have these really mm -hmm. old facilities, actually gotten covered by the globe a couple of times. It's really ancient facilities. They need to move. Um, and it is very likely that they'll remain on Cape 
but the the them moving has opened them up to folks from elsewhere wanting to wanting to grab them and take them. And uh, back, I think it was six, seven years ago, there was this large research vessel uh, called the Bigelow, um, and Senator Reed from Rhode Island snatched that um, from uh, from Woods Hole and moved it uh, to Rhode Island. And so this this letter, uh, which I wrote, uh, uh, is to um, all you know our federal delegation, and it's to the new. Uh, Secretary of NOAA, who was appointed about six months ago. Uh, it's signed by every chamber of commerce um, in the region, including uh, including Nantucket, um, signed by uh, the, the selectmen's, um, the, the kind of Cayman Island Selectmen Association, uh, all the large institutions in Woods Hole, Woods Hole Oceanographic, MBL, you know, literally the, the world's largest ocean research institutions about you know, keeping one of the largest employers in our broader Cape and Islands region there. And, um, you know, it'd be wonderful. I, you won't be, this doesn't impact Nantucket um, as much um, as other areas, but, you know, NOAA Fisheries has come out here mm -hmm. a fair amount, mm -hmm. right? And that's, mm -hmm. and part of that is their proximity mm -hmm. to being here and they're really easy for folks on island to engage with. And that's because they're right on the Cape. And so keeping them here is really important. I also just think it's important, and we do this at the State House um, you know, every day, because there's eight of us uh, who represent the Cape and Islands. Um, and uh, half of us are Dem, well actually, let, only three of us are Dems and five of us are Republicans, but we work really closely together on every single Cape and Island issue. Uh, regardless of party affiliation, because 90% of issues impacting our local communities are not partisan. Um, and we work really hard as a tight knit group to advocate for the entire Cape and Islands, even if it's even if things are outside of our, our district or our local communities, because there's like 45 reps from Boston alone, right? Mm -hmm. So we really need uh, to hang tight together as a region. And so, you know, it would be it would be great if you guys, um, you know, could either I, I think you've actually already signed on to this letter, or at least I've put you on it, <laughs> uh, because the Cayman Islands uh, Select Board Association signed on, and so Ed McManus said you could list you know, all the towns. But he then he mentioned about doing each town doing a separate letter. Um, if that's something you'd like to do, um, uh, certainly couldn't hurt, and I'd be happy to send language for that if Ed hasn't already um, sent that out. It's just a little background there. Uh, and just to quickly add, so Rita and I went to the Cape Cod Selectmen's Association meeting last week. Jillian was there giving the update about the short-term rental tax bill, and this item came up, and the association voted to send a, a group letter, and then Ed, I think, did say he was going to send around a draft letter. I don't think I've seen it yet, but... I can um, send it, because they're just sending okay. my letter. Yeah, I can yeah. send it to you guys. I'll send it to you later. And just to add to that, there were quite a few uh, other select board members that were really asking for support on this and talking about how important it is mm -hmm. for the communities in Woods Hole. So I would very, be very much in favor of signing that as a board. And it was amazing to see you folks in East Town. Uh, that was re real <laughs> dedication. And we're, you know, we, we really should think about hosting, uh, having, force, uh, doing a meeting here, and we can, we can um, we, guilt. I would, I'd be glad to guilt. Uh, the towns and, and the select uh, other select boards I represent uh, on the mainland to come over. So please, glad to glad to be enlisted in that effort. There's been a couple of requests for that. So. <laughs> Do we need a motion for that letter, or is it just going to be done? I think by consensus, if you all yeah. just generally agree, yeah. that, that'd be great. Yeah. Any other questions or comments from the board or from representatives? So we'll just thank, I mean, thank, thank you thank for you the tremendous partnership. I mean, you know, so many of the issues that we tackle on Beacon Hill are implemented, you know, at the local level. Uh, and, 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 you know, as you folks know, and as Dylan well knows through all the home rule work, uh, so much of the wonderful things you're trying to do um, by the structure of, of how the Massachusetts Constitution works passes through Beacon Hill. So just really, really are, you know, I think both of us are really grateful uh, for the partnership and also the, the real support. Uh, and help you provide our staffs. Actually, both uh, Pat Johnson from my office, who's my chief of staff, um, and Tom Dixon uh, from Dillon's staff is here tonight, and, and really grateful for uh, all that you do and, and, and the work and the collaboration you have with them. Thank you both. Very well said. Uh, I'll just echo that and just say it's, uh, you know, it's an honor to represent Nantucket. I love it here. 
I love this community. Uh, you've been incredibly welcoming, and you guys have been terrific to partner with on a whole host of issues. Uh, the entire select board's been incredibly responsive um, and just wonderful to work with. And so looking forward to continued partnership. And our office, you know, we're here very often. We're here, you know, several times a month. Um, so, uh, you know, we're always free to meet, free to connect. Uh, just thank you for having us tonight. And it's, it's wonderful serving with you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So we're going to move back to citizen department request. We have Sachem's Path Homeowners Association request for waiver of sewer privilege fees for properties within Sachem's Path development. So I'm just going to.